Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we peered behind a death's door, saw something horrible, which raised our terror to, I think it was 95%. Um, and I basically just hightailed it back to the reach to reduce my terror, get it back down to zero, which it now is, thankfully. So now I'm ready to go back to the Blue Kingdom, but since we're in the reach, I was looking through anything that I want to do here, and there is one thing. I still need to visit three of the other signal boxes of the Isambard line in the Reach for the Fatalistic Signalman's Quest. I've already visited one of them, but I've got three more. So let's go do that. Let's see what's going on with Titania. Ah, the bees again. I am going to lose a member of my crew. There they go. Have some Gorster Nectar, though. Yeah, so I figure while I'm going around visiting all of the signal boxes, might as well visit all the places, buy the deals, see what little things we can do. Poor report. Oh, I was supposed to go here for the race for the Rochester Club? Oh, well, I think they gave me some supplies or something. Yeah, thanks, buddy. <laughs> Good lord, you were late. <laughs> it's probably been months. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Lord Rochester looks up from his honey toast with astonishment. Well, don't just stand around. Bolly will get a shake on. He waves you out of the office, though not before ensuring your engine is stocked up for the journey back. I like that it says something different if you're just super, super late. And also how this seems to be... I'm, I'm pretty certain that this is tailored specifically for Titania, because it mentions honeyed toast. Assist with port repairs... Uh, pay for all poor repairs. Ten sovereigns. I think I can swing it. The mayor is speechless because of ten sovereigns? Hey, how are funds going for Titania, by the way? It's a 30%. And I'm pretty sure if I go to the art exhibition and convince someone else to help, it'll go up to 40%. Encourage a visitor to invest in Titania. Yes, gone up to 40%. Good. I hope I get to see this place get upgraded at least once before I finish the game. <laughs> uh, maybe I should just pay for it myself. That would guarantee it, at least. Ah, the Sky Story stuffs. Don't want to do any of that. Hmm, they got a bargain of mystery approved literature. Heck yeah. Alright, I'm off to the nature reserve. Oh, hold on just a second. I just killed... Uh, a bunch of bees, because now that I got Corister Nectar, everybody wants to attack me. And now I can collect the soul of a bee. I thought I had to do something special to be able to do that. Uh, remember, I need, I think, three of those to continue the Incognito Princess's quest at Kirillin. And I thought I needed to do something super special to even be able to do that, because it was never an option when I killed Corister Bees before. But I guess now that I have the quest, it is an option. Collect the soul of a bee. The princess encourages you not to waste any part of the bee, especially the parts she needs. Collecting the soul of a chorister bee, a chorister bee swarm, is traditionally an onerous endeavor. Made a little easier by the distraction the incognito princess provides. She stands by her porthole, nose nuzzling against the glass, while the spectral remains of the swarm jostle to get closer to her. Oh, you little people already love me, she whispers, thrilled. While a princess is bonding, you have a more arduous task, slowly unwinding a soul from the bee's not-quite corpse while avoiding the last futile twitches of its sting. Interesting. The last special remains of the swarm jostle to get closer to her. <laughs> that reminds me of the movie Jupiter Ascending. Need two more pieces. Well, that will not be a problem. I'm just about to be attacked again. Uh. Uh oh. Oh. Same description. Yeah. Well, heck, we're gonna have a new thing to do here in the Reach. Then go to Carillon.
Sorry, bees. I need your souls. That should do it. They have the bee souls she needs. She wishes you to head to Kirillin. Well, first, the nature reserve. At the nature reserve, I don't actually need to do anything in particular here, but I think Eleanor Green is the signal box we need to go to. Of course, we got the hunting party. Um, yeah, let's reduce terror, that's fine. Explore it on my own. Gather a port report. Let's turn in all the research. Wings of a Chorister Bee, I always love doing this. 300 Sovereigns. Ants from a Homestead, 300 Sovereigns. Stomach of a Cantankery, 250 Sovereigns. Fungal Crinlin from a Mushroom Meteoroid, 300 Sovereigns. Pen of a Scribe Spinster, 400 Sovereigns. Nice. Don't I have an Apollonian Cinders thing to turn in? Because I like distributed flyers. Oh, I guess I can just agree to distribute more? I guess I already completed it. Or maybe I just haven't completed it yet. Enter the reserve, take a quick trip. I think we get some sky stories. Two sky stories. I've got 71 of those. Some munitions as a bargain. Sure. I'm running out of space because I've just been collecting so much stuff. Especially a lot of nectar. All right, let's head on over to Eleanor Green. What's that? Oh, Tackety. Hey, buddy. Whoa, no, 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 no. You're not a Tackety. Shit. Bash him. <sighs> oh yeah, somebody wanted me to continue... Um, wait. I thought there was an option with the guests. To, uh, like, collect them. To try to start making a weapon. I needed a certain amount of them. How do I do that, though? Not that, not that, not that. Search it for valuables? No, they just gave me a captivating treasure. I don't know why I didn't have the option on this one. That's my first captivating treasure, though. The guests occupied the wreck as comprehensively as a snail does its shell. The crew has long since been ground to paste. <laughs> but what is this? Preserved beneath the floor of the captain's cabin. A safe. You drag it free, scrub off the worst of the guest ooze and carry it back to your engine. Something thumps enticingly inside. I'm surprised that's my first captivating treasure. I don't think I've ever needed to use them anywhere. Oh, the call of Langley Hall. Support the sleepless stoker. Stop playing music. Come on, people need to sleep. I boosted the wrong way. Hmm, that might be another guest. 
Are you a guest? Mm, I don't think so. Salon Street Gossip. A lot of action around Eleanor Green. The window frames serve as a trellis for a vine circumnavigating the signal box. The plant's stem resembles a thick, a thigh-thick twine, giving the building the appearance of a hurriedly wrapped parcel. Inside, beneath a desk covered with rusted levers, is a luggage trunk. Captains in dire need can borrow from the cash inside, but custom dictates they must later replenish it. Deposit the signalman. Look at the state of this place, he grumbles. Cut it away and it grows back. Fruitless bloody job. Despite his complaint, he prunes away at the vine as neatly as a widow at her window box. Some recent visitors left cigarette butts and unwashed cutlery scattered about. The signalman tidies them away. Then, taking a key from his pocket, he unlocks a drawer and removes a stuffed envelope from it. It contains old newspaper clippings about the construction of the Isambard line. Their tone is breathless, exalting the vision of the quixotic squire. Easy to forget, people actually thought we'd manage it, the signalman muses. He stuffs the envelope under one arm. All done, he says, clambering back on board. At Lustrum, the mountain sings. Let's join the celebration, lower terror. Sweet Jane, do we have much more to turn into you? Mm, no, I, st I have just one charred stovepipe nameplate. But we can get a port report. And drink some tea at Murgatroyd's Golden Tea Shop. Produce our terror even further. Let's try Indulgence Blend straight from the Blue Kingdom. What do they have for a deal? Try tea. Hmm. I don't really have room for much more stuff. To be honest, I kind of desperately need fuel, and I think I should just get a bunch of fuel, and that's probably about it. Okay, I'm going to head on to, I think it's down here, the Whelping Rest. That's the next signal box. Here's the signal box. Sorry, buddy. Oh, there's another one. Let's get the stomach. You will always find an uncanny specimen, but may lose crew. No, I won't. 100% chance of success. Abandoned signal box. Window cracks have accreted a filling of moss green dust. Once white paint is yellowed and peeling. The signal box possesses a faded dignity, like a beleaguered butler. It was designed with pride to be part of that great folly, the Isambard line. Deposit them. The latch is broken, allowing the signal box door to bang in the wind. I won't be long, he promises. If you don't mind waiting. Inside, skeletal leaves are scattered across the floor. Locating a broom, the signalman sweeps it clear. Then he turns his attention to the door. Repairing it is an awkward job for one pair of hands, so you lend him yours. The two of you work in easy silence. One holding while the other hammers. One measuring while the other trims. When you've rehung the door, it swings easily on its freshly oiled hinges, the latch dropping firmly into place. Good job well done, he says as if that is thanks enough. Shutting the door carefully behind me hops back onto your locomotive. Okay, just one more signal box. It's supposed to be down near Port Prosper. I don't actually know where it is, exactly. Addison Wick, is that one? 
Might as well visit Port Prosper while I'm in the area. Port report. There's a grand ball going on. Candles illuminate the great staircase that sweeps up to the residence of the Windward Company, which has been chosen to host this season's ball. Westenders promenade in their finest. Uh, I think we have seen this in the past. But yeah, I'm definitely going to spend time with the Eastenders. Gossip with the servants. Those who serve know those who rule intimately. Oh, is this the one that gives me, like, a whole stack of crockery? No, five savage secrets. Good, because I don't have space for that much crockery. The disgruntled parlor maid has been press ganged into serving canopies, can canapes. She's the favorite of several of the notables in attendance and sufficiently irritated to disclose a very great deal indeed. Is there anything else to do? So the bleak industrialist is the one who wants me to find their love. I haven't found their love yet, though. I just have leads about that. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else to do, really. Stained glass is a bargain. That's good. I'm going to buy as much of that as I can fit. Here we go. Yeah, it looks like Addison Wick is the last signal box. The Silverstone. My hole is pretty damaged, because off-camera in between these locations I've been killing scribe spinsters and dreadnoughts and stuff. Yeah, let's trip over our bears. Whoa, whoa. Gotta real close to investigate. <laughs> Deposit the signalman. Um, actually, have we read this description? The signal box has been blasted by weapon fire. Despite the holes, the shattered tiles, the fractured beams, it still has enough structural integrity for you to climb inside without risk. It was made with care and pride. He wrinkles his nose at the old, sooty scent of smoke that still clings to the place. Some idiot left a candle burning here a year or so ago. Fire made a right mess before the peacock wind smothered it. Then marauders started using the old girl for target practice. He bats the wall sympathetically. It took me a month to fix her up again, and I've never got rid of the smell. He gives the signal box a good airing, opening the windows and letting the biting wind blow through. Shivering, he flicks through the ledger attached to the Skyfarer's cache and gives a satisfied nod. Before he leaves, he shuts the windows and blows out the lamp. Can't be too careful. That was the last one. Hold on, let me get out of this disturbing little corner where I feel like I'm going to hit something. Freedom! What am I doing? I should probably press the officer's button. <clears throat> Ask if he's satisfied with the state of the signal boxes. He's in his cabin, surrounded by the notes and pages of his unfinished signaling catalog. A dim light illuminates the scribbling path of his pen on a fresh page. His pace has increased recently. Aye, a good job, well done. But if you'll excuse me, I have a chapter to finish. As you leave, though, he calls back to you. Comrade. His brown eyes are firm. Thank you. I don't know why you bothered, but you did. Signalman needs nothing from you at the moment to be patient. Okay. Right. 
Um, well, I still need to go to Kirillin for the Incognito Princess. I have... Well, my hole is bursting with stuff. So, let's actually go to... I guess I'll go to Magdalene's on the way back to New Winchester, where I'll dump off a bunch of my stuff. So, Magdalene's next. Okay, I just made a bit of a mistake. <laughs> I got the random event where you are not where you thought you were. And I had two options, either just try to press on through it, or spend some of my fuel, like, doubling back and stuff. And I thought that would take away one fuel, but it took away two. Which means... I'm gonna run out of fuel? Unless I can make it to Magdalene's in time, and I don't think I can, because that is awfully low. I've never run out of fuel before. I think you get the option to, like, burn some stuff as emergency fuel. There's no way I'm going to make it. Yeah, zero way. Okay, well, we get to see what happens for the first time. This will be interesting. Discontent. Well, this is not related to the fuel, actually. Additional ration of brandy. Sure. 2%, 1%. Adrift. The last of your fuel is gone. The fires of your engine dim and die. Your funnel coughs its last. Already the cold of the high wilderness is crawling frosty fingers across your windows. Your remaining hopes are all desperate. You have three chances to find a lifeline before the cold claims you. Ooh, there's a lot we can do. Signal for help. Very unlikely. Need a bunch of supplies for this. Make a living sacrifice to the brewer below. Oh man, that's dark. But the things I can do. Burn ministry prove literature. Mm. This may grant one fuel, but it will damage your reputation with London. Not like I give a shit. Oh, it's only a 60% chance though, and it's going to burn half my literature. Three out of six. Hmm. Inscribe a searing enigma upon your regulator valve. This will always give you three fuel, but has alarming consequences. Success may ameliorate them a little. Oh, I don't like that. 77% chance of success. It sounds very intriguing though, doesn't it? Let's do it. A glyph in the language of suns, the very soul of fire. Your engineer strenuously objects, but their commitment to science has always been disappointingly tenuous. Well, it hurt the engine, but that's fine. The sigil blazes, savage as the blood of stars. Your engines rage, your cylinder resounds with thunder. Pistons shriek, frantically trying to keep up with the sudden pressure. Pipes crack, filling the corridors with foggy steam. A tank ruptures, crew scream. A stoker laughs wildly and his tongue is a licking flame. Your locomotive thunders through the skies, an unstoppable leviathan. Okay, so yeah, some bad stuff happened. A bit hurt, we lost a crew member, gained terror because that was terrifying, but that's not too bad. I succeeded, didn't I? I wonder how bad it would have been if I didn't. Okay, we're okay, that's fine. What can we do at Magdalene's? We have a really high terror, I'm gonna have to go back to the circus probably, before I go back to the Blue Kingdom. The Keepsake Market. Oh, I think there's a chance... Um. This will reduce a significant amount of terror while away the time with other captains. 50 sovereigns, that's absolutely worth it. I think we've done that once before. Let's do this. 65. Down to 40. So 25% reduction for 50 sovereigns, that is fantastic. The reach is so easy compared to the other zones, huh? There's so many more opportunities and they're so cheap compared to the, like, the Blue Kingdom. Or even Eleutheria. Treat my nightmares. Oh yeah, I should do that. My nightmares are actually pretty high. They're awful. And I could try going to the Solace Chambers to treat my terror, which I don't think I've ever done. Hmm. Let's treat my nightmares. 
The more you use these treatments, the more expensive they will become. I know I've used them once, I think. So what does this cost? Two moments of inspiration? Ouch. This costs also two moments of inspiration. But it's unlocked when you are not alone. Let's do this one. Your new friend. He's pleased to be off a locomotive for a time. The room is cold as a morgue. Two beds have been prepared. Your friend is in one, already asleep. They're stacked like bunks, as though you were in a child's room, or perhaps a cabin. He's gone when you wake to the sound of the clock. Glad to get rid of my friend. I don't think I'll treat my nightmares again. What's it going to cost next time? Oh, it increasingly costs one more inspiration. Let's see if I can treat my terror. What does this take? This will provide a unique encounter and lower your terror for just one savage secret. That is super cheap. Salon stewed gossip, cheap. Uncanny specimen. Well, let's do the one I have the most of. 42, 33, it's too savage secret. Request a treatment for loneliness. The high wilderness is a savage, lonely place. From 40%, uh, hasn't reduced it yet. He smiles the practice smile of an old friend offering comfort for their comrades' predictable misdeeds. That's my specialty, when I'm on duty in the chambers. He begins to hum the tune of a popular ballad, of a signaler falling from his locomotive unnoticed by his captain and drifting cold in the dark. This way, do keep up. The attendant holds up a candle before four doors of mirrored glass. Four of our staff are available today. Each has their own specialty. Their names are not yours to know, only their craft. He smiles suddenly, his teeth gleaming like links on a chain. You know yourself best. Who can tend your wounded heart? Whoever you need, you can find behind one of these doors. Someone from my past, or a very boring individual, or someone who once meant a very great deal, or a former crewman. <laughs> hmm. A former crewman. They were lost in your service. Oh, from 40 down to 15. Her eyes light up as you enter the room. Looks just like a bunk on your engine. She's laid out the tea, just how you liked it. When did you lose her again? Was it an accident? Did you part ways on the Isambard line? You can't remember, and she's good enough not to mention it. Instead, she talks of former times, of old friends remembered, older jokes shared. It's only hours after that you remember what happened to her. We have lost so many crew. God, what if I kept count of every crew that I lost? It would be definitely dozens. Definitely dozens. Easily. <clears throat> Alright, that's that's plenty. When I get back to New Winchester, the rest of my terror will disappear. I don't think there's anything else to do. Oh, port report. Yeah, that's good. Barrels of unseasoned hours. Hmm. Just in case another random event shows up, I'd rather just not run out of supplies or fuel. Back to New Winchester. Hmm, the signaler's quest has progressed. In the absence of cigarette smoke, a junior signaler callers you in the galley. She asks if you've seen the fatalistic signalman who hasn't reported for duty today. The other crew haven't seen him since he retired to his cabin last night. But the junior signaler has tried knocking and received no response. Several crewmen exchange glances, but the young signaler says she's already checked the exterior hatch and found it securely closed. A macabre but pragmatic precaution. Check his cabin. As captain, you don't need to wait for a come in. <clears throat> the vanishing act. His cabin is empty. His belongings are gone. His bed is neatly made. All that remains are the newspaper clippings the signalman retrieved from the overgrown signal box, spread across the tiny table. The smell of tobacco still clings to them. You glance at their headlines. Ambitious plan to ring the reach. 
new line to be miracle of modern engineering. Construction begins on Isambard Line's fifth signal box. Wait, fifth signal box? You only visited four. The article claims that despite recent setbacks, the Quixotic Squire was building a final signal box in the vicinity of Hybris. Locate the last signal box to find a clue to the signalman's whereabouts. Oh, I am intrigued. A final signal box in the vicinity of Hybris. So does that mean we have no officer for a signaler? No. Uh, well, I guess I should go back to Magdalene and assign one for now, right? Hmm. The Burrower's Breath. Ochre fogs rise above your locomotive. The air acquires a caustic copper tang. Your driver complains they can't see a damn thing. The Burrower's Breath, they murmur. The fog persists all day. That evening, a gnarled crewman visits your cabin. The Burrower below is displeased, he informs you. She expects a sacrifice. If you wish it, he will arrange it. Try to find my way through, 70%. Oh, old chart? Heck yeah, I've got 14 of those. Definitely not sacrificing a crew member. <laughs> yeah, success. I didn't even lose the chart. Your navigator hunches over the illicit chart, feeding curt instructions to your driver. Their course is true. The chart is reliable. Eventually, your engine crawls from the fog, which has already begun to discolor your hull, turning its rivets the color of a smoker's mustache. You roll the life-saving chart carefully and return to your cabin. You may need it again one day. So I'm just heading up this long strip that'll lead me to Hybris. I'm assuming that uh, the signal box I need to find is somewhere pretty close to Hybris. Somewhere in here. I've been back through there such... Wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. Is this it? Oh, shit. I think that's it. Yeah, here's the lost fifth signal box of the Isambard line. Can a thing be forgotten if people never knew of it? Pale clumps of hybrid fungus cling to the old signal box. Inside, the contamination is even worse. Fungus coats every surface, as pristine as fresh snowfall. When you open the door, you scrape a neat arc in the carpet of it. Otherwise, it's undisturbed. No one has been here in years. White spores hang in the air, like snowflakes afraid of falling. The corpse on the bed? Uh... I hope the signaler didn't die. Brush the spores from the shapes on the bedside table. One of the shapes is squarish, the size of your palm. The other is larger and domed. The spores arise in puffy clouds. You shield your nose and mouth. You uncover an empty packet of cigarettes and a gray bowler hat. Uh-oh. Examine the corpse on the bed. It's only a rough cylindrical shape under its cover of bed sheets and fungus. The corpse is desiccated, ravaged by fungus. It lies on its side facing the wall, knees drawn up. Its back is to you, which makes the act of brushing off the spores seem like a violation of privacy. But you have to know. And, indeed, under the coat of pale spores, it wears a gray Isambard line uniform. Was it the cold that killed it? The fungus? Sickness? It's impossible to say. The high wilderness holds a thousand quiet deaths. You can only be sure that it has lain here undiscovered and undisturbed for years. Well, it's not them. Unlock the cabinet. A key protrudes from a door in the bedside cabinet. Inside, safely secured away from the fungus, is a thick handwritten manuscript. Signs and signals of the high wilderness, an omnibus. 
Its pages are filled with a fatalistic signalman's hurried penmanship and describe almost every signal language used in Albion and the Reach with encyclopedic thoroughness. In appendices, the omnibus also addresses the secret signals used by marauders and smugglers, attempts to interpret the spasms and tattoos of scorn flukes, and deciphers the echoing shrieks of curators. There's nothing else of value in the signal box. The trail ends here at a white, silent grave. The omnibus is sufficiently comprehensive that even a basically qualified signaler can use it and operate as a much more experienced one. It functions as an officer and can be assigned to your signaler slot. It grants plus 10 to mirrors and plus 2 to affiliation villainy. Wait, so that is them? But the corpse has been dead for years. What? Have I had a ghost on board? You've acquired a copy of the Signalman's Magnum Opus, Signs and Signals of the High Wilderness and Omnibus. The story of the Signalman is concluded. Oh my god, I was never expecting an officer's quest to end in them... Well, not really them dying, but disappearing? Because apparently they died years ago. Killed by spores, maybe. Sticking to the Isambard line right before it was abandoned on the last unknown signal box. I, I want to examine the corpse again. The corpse is desiccated, ravaged by fungus. It lies on its side, facing the wall, knees drawn up. Its back is to you which makes the act of brushing off the spores seem like a violation of privacy. But you have to know, and indeed, under the coat of pale spores, it wears a gray Isambard Lion uniform. Was it the cold that killed it? The fungus? Sickness? It's impossible to say. The high wilderness holds a thousand quiet deaths. You can only be sure that it has lain here undiscovered and undisturbed for years. It might have been their heart condition. That they died from, that's another possibility. But um, it's been here for years? How have you been on board by ship? And they disappeared. Instantly, like impossibly. They just disappeared. They must have been a spirit. I must have picked up a spirit. And now I guess it's been... It feels free to pass on now that it's done its life's work. You step outside and close the door. Behind you, the spores are already settling. Climbing back onto your engine, you brush them off your sky suit. The crew are keen to be away from here. This just feels so eerie. But I mean, it's a good end, right? That's why we were touring them around everywhere. They needed to see all those signal boxes and everything that they had been that they had been building and their life's work and all of that till they finally felt comfortable to pass on. That's a good ending, right? I mean, it's happy. It leaves me feeling oddly hollow though because they're just gone. They're just gone. So there's my new signaler. <laughs> yeah. Ten mirrors and two villainy. I can get really high villainy then. And the ten mirrors, that should make it pretty easy to get up to 75 mirrors and 75 veils. Time for Kirillin and the Incognito Princess. Overgrown Shrine to reduce our tear. Contemplate it. Get a port report. Anything we can do with the presiding deviless? I always wonder that and the answer is always no. Oh, wait. 
Oh, actually, I have to do that for the quest for the Incognito Princess. Okay. Have the devils forge a ring for the princess. The devils will forge a ring for the princess to borrow. All they need is the right souls. As in, those of Corister Bees. The devils set to work. The uncanny distillation of the ethereal insectoid souls uh, segging into the mysteries of constructing stained glass with pure souls. The lead devil interrogates the princess as she watches, impatient. This will be a loan, princess. The ring must be returned, with interest. You understand this, yes? Yes, said the princess. I understand everything. That's part of what being a princess is about. With some <laughs> trepidation, the devils pass the perfect glass circle to her. She holds it up, abruptly enchanted by the swarm of souls swirling around its interior. What's going to happen when I help the princess all the way? I'm scared. Because that's not the end of their quest. We need to do one other thing for them for this, this step. And there's probably more after that, even. <clears throat> what is the next thing? Need to visit a crossroads in Eleutheria. I'm not sure what a crossroads exactly is, but that's an Eleutheria, so that's probably going to be a bit till I do that. I'm going to head over to Lustrum, because I have two prospects for there, actually. One to deliver nine munitions, and another to deliver four munitions. So overall, it should be pretty lucrative. At Lustrum, just reduced my tear and drank some tea and all that good stuff. Let's turn in the prospects. Nine for this one. 1,200 just from that straight up. Plus a barrel of unseasoned hours and an unlicensed chart. Then we got another one. 600 profit, bonus 100, bonus fortune with attackities. My reputation with attackities is 401. I am like a god to them. All right, gonna grab this tea and then head home to New Winchester. It is time to go back to the Blue Kingdom. My terror is low, just one nightmare, full whole health, almost a full crew, plenty of crew, I don't need up to 24. Bought a crap ton of supplies because I don't want to have to deal with Petrichor. I also have a bunch of supplies that I stored away in my bank to make sure I can always get more without having to leave the Blue Kingdom. Let's go back. First class, so yeah, that takes otherworldly artifact. Oh, I can't even do second class. You need two barrels of unseasoned hours or two things of souls. I only brought like one of everything, not two. First class it is. Back in the Blue Kingdom. Let's go to Sky Barnet and see what we can do. At some point off camera, I let my cowled loquacitor go, so I should hire someone else to help me. I want to go with someone else just to change things up, I suppose. Uh, marketplace of litigators for that. Uh, is there anything else I can do, though? Like, can I turn any poll reports? I have one gratitude right now. <clears throat> oh, yeah, and you can trade gratitude for a cryptic benefactor? Because I think I'm out. In fact, I think I maybe needed one for something here. Takes three gratitude, though, but yeah, I definitely want gratitude. Very useful. Let's get a litigator. So let's, hmm. Let's knock at the Cowled Loquacitor. Nameless Spirit. It needs to help with hearts though, right? Because my hearts are terrible. This hearts and veils, mirrors and hearts. That sounds pretty good. Iron and mirrors, no. Let's get the Nameless Spirit so it helps with mirrors and hearts. It carries a jar containing its voice, it wears a mask, and yet it seems familiar. The nameless spirit's voice creaks out of its jar. Thank you, it says. I've always been an explorer. It's a deep voice, deeper than one should be able to fit into a container sized for pickles. 
as if to acknowledge the incongruity, the nameless spirit winks at you. But you have the sense it's also searching for something in your face, and it's not sure whether it has found the something. I got the nameless spirit. Oh yeah, any more prospects? <clears throat> I've got two things for the white whale right now, ours and immaculate souls. That's going to be worth a lot. Caged catches for the Forge of Souls. Bronzewood for the Forge of Souls. I like all these doubles. Double prospects for one place are really nice. Five of that. Seven things of Bronzewood. That's going to be really valuable. These are all really valuable, honestly. Except the, the hours, I suppose, but... It's a double. Along with Immaculate Souls, both for the White Well. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return... We're going to explore more of the Blue Kingdom now that I have the terror to actually do that.